What's up, guys? It's your boy, Demon, aka The Motivational, and today, a special treat for you guys. All right, so listen, uh, I know a lot of you guys out there are still struggling, struggling, struggling to be giants. Listen, and uh, you know, through doing these account optimizations and these account reviews live on Twitch for the subscribers to the channel, um, you know, like I said, there's some consistencies that I'm, that I'm looking at. And I want to understand because this is what I do not want to do in the community. I do not want to create a divide between people who do things one way and then people who do things another way, right? So if you guys have been watching my Lapis Challenge, I'm not using Vero. I'm not going to fuse Vero until Dragons, okay? Um, and you, if you guys have asked me, you know, I avidly say, like, look, you guys don't need Vero because you just don't. You can do Giants without Vero. Trust. However, um, I used to do Giants with Vero. I used to be an avid supporter of using Vero. So in today's video, guys, listen, there's more than one ways to skin a cat. And the quote of the day is, there are limitless ways to get to the top of the mountain, but there's only one view from the top. It's only one. It's only one view. It's down. Okay. So my job today is to cover the top two strategies that you guys can use to clear Giants 10 and be successful. Um, so I'm going to show you guys some units. We're going to talk about stat requirements. We're going to talk about all that nip nap and riff rap and jib jab to really help you guys square away your teams and find success in Giants. Oh, yeah. You guys ready? Do I have permission to tell you guys these strategies? Can I share them with you? All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and dive on in. All right. So as you guys know, traditional TMG used to use this strategy. Hold on. Let me see if, if I have all three units here. I don't. Just kidding. So I can't show you that strategy. But anyway, the old school TMG used to use the Light Trio and Shannon Bernard. Um, but for the sake of instruction today, we'll do some randoms here. Let's do... Siggy, because that's pretty non-conventional, or uh, pretty conventional, excuse me. Uh, let's do Bella, Bernard, and Megan or Shannon. Wait, I think I have a Shannon in here, too. One second. Don't yell at me. Don't you yell at me while I look for Shannon. Oh, no, Shannon's in storage. Okay, so um, let's just do Lapis. Sure, why not? So in this situation here, guys, there's a couple of things. Um, what you're going to notice is that there's no Vero in this composition. So th this is typically the traditional comp that, I'm, I, that I would start the game with and that I would work on now um, because I understand how the mechanics of Giants works. So, um, so for instance, you know, we got Lapis here, we got Siggy. These two spots can be any damage dealers you want, literally, um, other than fire units and yet, unless you're using Qua to control the Giants attack bar. Yes, Qua does work, but we're not covering that in this video. Uh, we're talking about just two damage dealers. So anybody can fit here. You can, you know, you can put your water homunculus if you have one of those. You can put your Annabelle. You can put your Beth. You can put your Basalt even. You can do Sierra. You can do Charlotte. You can do cookies. You can do pineapples. You can do cakes. You can do whatever you want to do in these two slots, okay? Lucian, whatever. Now, um, you can also put another healer in this slot. You can put more support in this slot. You can put... Um, Anything you want, literally, in this slot, okay? Um, and the same thing goes for this slot. These two slots are interchangeable. Now, the one key thing here is, if, you, if you'll notice, that there is no Vero here. Why is there no Vero here? It's because we're, we're capitalizing on different mechanics, okay? Now, the mechanics of Giant is this. He hits hard as shit, okay? Dang it. I wasn't supposed to cuss, guys. I'm working on, on stopping using curse words, so help me, all right? <laughs> So uh, he hits like a ton of bricks, okay? So this guy hits really hard. So if you can control how hard he hits, basically reducing his attack power with units that break attack, specifically like Bernard, Darien, um, break attack power, uh, Darien, Roy, the Wind Vagabond, any of the Desert Queens, you know, stuff like that. You can control how hard this unit effectively hits you, and then you can control what you do in the dungeon, per se. Okay, um, the other thing here is that we're also controlling um, his beneficial effects. If you guys look here, uh, you got C's where uh, specific units remove beneficial effects from the boss, which also controls how hard this, you know, the boss can hit you. What you're also doing is with this uh, comp, you're manipulating the attack bar. So like the faster your Bernard is, 
the more turns you'll get. And we'll talk about those speed requirements um, here for Bernard to ensure that your team gets enough turns even when your AI messes up. And then you're also counting on the buff here from your buffer, whether that be Shannon, Megan, Bastet, whoever, uh, to keep your team alive. Now, understand if you guys are going to use like Bastet, who only comes with an attack buff that could put you in danger. But I'm talking specifically about the defense buff here. OK, and then Megan also has beneficial effect removal, but that still falls in line with this unit right here. OK, um, so by manipulating those three things, whether Shannon, Bernard, Bella, Megan, Bernard, Bella, it'll allow these two units, whichever these units are that you chose, whether this is a healer or this is a healer and this is a, another damage dealer, or whatever, um, for your team to be successful and to do its job. OK, does that make sense? OK, so when running a comp like this, it's most important that you have a few things. You're going to want to make sure that your Bernard, the guy that influences your attack bar, is as fast as possible. Over 200 speed is recommended, which you can do very easily on Swift. Um, it will take some time, especially aiming for GB10, but um, I'm learning this. It's a new thing that's coming into play here simply because uh, I've noticed that Bernard has this tendency to derp sometimes. And when he does, the more turns he gets, the faster he'll get back online and reattune with your team. So um, you'll want to make sure that he's as fast as possible. Okay. Now that you're also going to want to make sure that your team that is applying negative effects or removing negative effects has at least 45% accuracy. Okay. And that is paramount to this particular strategy. So that way your two guys here can do what they need to do. Some other key things that can help you is if you're running AOE units like a Siggy or a whatever, or a, a Rainbow Pony or a Charlotte, for instance, um, this is not the build that you would have. That's an arena build. <laughs> but you would run your particular unit like on despair. Uh, what that would allow you to do is effectively control the additional monsters um, as you're moving through the dungeon, which will allow you to safely get to the boss. Okay, and that's one of the strategies, A, that I recommend. Um, if you guys don't really want to fuse Vero uh, yet, you know, you feel like it's a lot of work, that's something that you can do. Now, keep in mind, if you guys are running this dam double damage or single damage healer strategy, those are the things that you're going to need in place in order to be successful. Now, the other strategy, the foolproof safety strategy, is when we include this guy right here, Vero, as your lead. Now, when you run Vero as your lead, this is the reason why most players recommend this strategy overall is because even though it's a lot of hard work to fuse Vero up front, it makes your transitioning easier because then you could just plug him in, pretty much put anything here, and be successful in, in Giants 10, right? Does that make sense? Not really anything, but almost anything. And then after you're done putting almost anything here, then you can go to dragons and if his runes are good enough then he can sustain for your dragons comp and then you plug right into dragons too not really that easy but simple i know i know okay so when if you guys decide to go the hard route and fuse barrel first there are some things that you're going to need as well now the accuracy requirements still will apply here because you're still going to want your bella and your megan or your shannon to do what they need to do like you want shannon to land her glancing hit this is not Shannon, by the way. You want Bella to be able to strip that buff, okay, um, to see. So you'll still want 45% accuracy here. Now, what changes, since you're going to be using Vero, and, and Vero will be moving the defense break, and you'll also want to make sure your Vero is at least, at least 150 to 175 speed. I recommend 175, but that's typically you want about 175, so it can be as effective as possible. But 150 to 175 is a pretty good speed for Vero. Now, since you're going to be running Vero at that speed and he's going to be removing the death break, it is no longer as important to remove the attack buff or excuse me, to apply the attack break. So you really don't need an attack break if your team here is running as efficiently as possible. These, these three units have enough HP. Uh, you know, I talked about like in other videos how you should have at least 15k HP on these units. 45% accuracy, 800 defense, and as long as you have that set threshold, now you now have basically removed the need to have attack break applied. So with these three, now your core becomes, you can pretty much put any two units you want here. Say you want another support for the removal, or you just want to run double damage, or you want to put, you know, Ronald McDonald here with, um, with Prince, okay? Or let's say you want to run, um, Jack Sparrow with, um, uh, let's see what we got here with uh, the Little Mermaid. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> anybody you guys want um, in these two slots literally can fit. Um, and understand, like, I, I know, I know, I get it, I get it. Galleon wouldn't go in that slot. I get it, I get it. It was just an example. 
Uh, but you guys can literally put anything here. And then Vero, because he's removing the defense break that the, the towers apply, and now opens up some more safe comps that you guys can run with this particular team. So all in all, like the big things, guys, is the, the key things that, that are going to remain consistent no matter which of these two strategies you guys apply is you're going to want to make sure that your buffer and Bella are in place that they need, you know, with the stats that they need. So the 45% accuracy, of course, you know, as much HP as possible, you know, 15K minimum, though, uh, but 15 to 20K is safe. Um, and then 800 defense is here so you can kind of absorb the buff understand that we throw this defense value out because when when you get defense broken it reduces your defense by 75 percent so i mean at least at 800 defense even with the death break um you're still at least a little bit at threshold to where you can still survive at least um if you want to do more defense you can people are like well how do i make it so my team doesn't need all that buffs and stuff well you take your buffer out but you increase your stats by 75 percent, which is not very easy to do <laughs> okay so uh that's going to be the key, the key thing here um and then so once these two units are in place like i said making sure your varos between 150 and 175 speed same stat threshold as these two um then you can run anything you want here if you guys are doing no varo then bernard will come into play or some kind of attack breaker drunken master whatever you want or you can put a drunken master here and run an attack break and then you run any other units you want in these two slots okay um, but the most important thing here if you guys are running without barrel is to make sure you break the attack with barrel um, then you guys don't need to break the attack you just need to keep the death buff off which is why his speed is going to be required so that way your team can do what it needs to do Ooh. <laughs> I'm having a wacky day today, y'all. It's it's crazy. <laughs> so, listen, guys. I just wanted to take a little bit of time and kind of break down uh, two of the most common strategies that are found in Giants, so you guys can really understand like what's the difference, and then you guys can find which one you feel like doing. You don't want to fuse Vero. Apply what you learned about running the three. If you do want to use Vero, then forget about Bernard and run the other two. Okay, um, and then through that you can find all the success you'll ever need as long as you hit the stat threshold. Make sure your units are max skilled, and that all the other requirements are in place, and you guys should be good to go in GB10. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the top two strategies to clearing GB10. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm just kidding. Peace. <laughs>